The PS2 Classic from Vanillaware is coming April 4th for Switch, PS4, and PS5, published by NIS America. When this first released, I have to admit that I not only didn't buy it at the time, I also had no idea what Vanillaware even was. This was later rectified when I played Miramasa for the Wii, and learned Vanillaware was a top-notch, memorable visuals and gameplay. Over the years, I've heard stories how great Grim Gamore was, but I never took the opportunity to play it, or even look into the game at all. So yeah, I jumped at the chance when NIS offered me a copy for review. As you'd expect, the game immediately jumps out at you for its art. It's bright, colorful, intense, and has a lot of character to it with how pronounced it is. This game, like most Vanillaware titles, has a strong storybook feeling to its style and is further enhanced by the enchanting soundtrack. Overall, I'd say I love the style, but to be honest, there was one thing that did bug me from the beginning, and that's the way that the camera sways back and forth between characters during dialogue, which made me feel pretty uneasy until I got more used to it. Of all the things I could complain about with the game, though, it really isn't anything major, and I'm certain there's someone who might come into the comments stating how they like it or that it's identical to the original release. I got my copy for the Nintendo Switch, and as I expected, the game not only runs well on the system, due to it mostly being hand-drawn and simply animated art, but also for the reason I really buy anything on the Switch, and that's because it's one of those titles that just feels right, having portability to pick up and play as you please. After the graphics and art style, I'd say the next thing the game does really well is the gameplay. I have to really preface this here though by saying I'm 100% absolutely not good, even in the slightest, at any real-time strategy games, which this game totally is. To say I struggled is a vast understatement, as towards the end of the tutorial levels I found myself losing and starting over again frequently. That got significantly worse once the game opened up to its core gameplay loop, which for instance took me about three times uneasy to get past failing three minutes into the battle. If you're playing the game for the first time, you don't get the option to change the difficulty until after the tutorial is over though, so expect that. To the game's benefit though, they did a great job with the tutorials, showing you the absolute basics and not pushing you too hard with more mechanics or tougher strategies until its finale. Even though I'm awful, I did feel like it was easy to learn, and after it was over, I was left to get good, as they say. I had the tools, I just needed to work my way through how to use them best in each situation thrown at me, and despite some shockingly fast losses, I didn't feel like I was presented with anything I couldn't eventually piece together. As I'm no pro, I find it hard to fully describe how to play, but in the most simple terms, you start with a base type portal which you use to spawn additional creatures from by using crystals known as mana as the resource. You are on a vertical and horizontal map which you navigate your minions through to find your enemies, bases, and in most cases seek to destroy their bases to win. Objectives can vary from map to map and sometimes require you to summon certain minions, survive a certain amount of time, or meet various gathering goals. It gets a bit trickier from there though as there isn't just one type of base area but many different kinds, some of which you don't even have access to at the beginning of matches and must find as you progress. Each type of base allows you to summon different creatures. You start off dealing mostly with these cute little fairies but before you know it you're summoning ghosts, demons, fairies, and even dragons. All of the minions on both sides have different strengths and weaknesses with each other as well which you must balance out to win. Some examples of that are astral or ghost type minions not taking damage from physical based minions or electro type minions absolutely devastating flying types. Of course, like any RTS you might have played before, there's also the standard gatherer minions that can attack or defend, but instead are just used simply to gather resources. A major concern I had about the game when I found out it was a side-scrolling RTS though was the controls. I'm happy to say that while I had a lot of fumbling and missteps with the controls, as you can plainly see in the video footage, the controls were mostly manageable and it didn't feel overly unforgiving when I did make mistakes. You're able to do basically anything you'd expect from an RTS quickly, such as selecting all units, all units of a specific type, or single units with a few quick buttons on the controller. As a noob, I can't say it all made sense immediately, but like most things I'm finding out with this game, the more you keep going, the more your brain pieces together the best ways to complete what you want to do quickly. Jumping over to the story side of things, I can say I wasn't immediately wildly impressed. You play as a young witch who enters a school of magic, and as you play through the tutorials, you discover more about the teachers and other students in the building. There are some zany and obviously tropey characters, but nothing even close to cringe. It's more just rather bland to begin with. As the tutorial wraps up though, you start to get a glimpse at what is to come, and then abruptly are thrown into the story's main feature, 
which is that it's like Groundhog's Day. Major event occurs at the end of your first week, and then you're back to day one. Except you remember the events of the week and no one else does. That means you're back to introducing yourself to the main cast again, but also in a position to try new things out with your interactions as you learn more about the characters than they'll learn about you. Is the initial premise absolutely ground shattering and world changing? No. It is fun though and it adds a bit of mystery and you feel like you're learning as much as you can before the next inevitable reset occurs. Overall, getting into the game was an interesting experience for me. I'm not exactly sure this is a good game to start into RTS games with, as there's no real casual way to play the game, but once you get past the tutorial, if you find yourself liking what you're playing, you'll be able to continue playing without a ton of pain. Lower difficulty levels boost the amount of mana you collect and provide special skills to help you as well, which does make the game easier for new people or bad people like me. There's also a pretty cool skill tree that becomes available and allows you to boost the speed and power of your minions, as well as other bonuses which you can unlock by using a coin currency you can achieve by completing main missions or, if you're stuck, by completing bonus missions known as trials specifically made to help you learn more about winning tactics and getting a larger number of coins to help you. I don't think it's a bad idea at all. I know a lot of people get used to crutches in games, but the systems they have in place on this one feels less like crutches and more like bonuses you have to earn. If that's your thing, or even if you're not sure how well you'll do in a game like this, I think it's a solid overall experience. I look forward to playing this on stream soon, and maybe some veterans or smarter people out there can kind of help correct some of the mistakes I'm sure I'm making. Check out Grim Grimoire once more, releasing in the US on April 4th. If you like the content, feel free to subscribe for more anime news, reviews, and gaming.